Hi everybody, it's Liz. I have a lot to share with you today. So settle in, get yourself a beverage, wrap yourself up in something cozy, take your shoes off, take your bra off. We have a lot to go over here and I'm really excited about all of it. So first of all, the anniversary, a very, very important milestone in my life. 20 years ago today, on September 3rd, 2004, which now feels like a million lifetimes ago, I got on an airplane and I flew to Rome to begin what would eventually become my Eat, Pray, Love journey, which it was not called at that time because I didn't have a title for it or even any understanding of what I was doing. <laughs> In fact, what I remember about this day 20 years ago was a feeling of incredible vertigo and fear as I sat on that plane. And I mean, I've been on a lot of planes before and since, but I don't ever remember such a strong sense of the force of the plane taking off, just this like, because I was flying away from an entire life that a path that I had been on that had stopped working for me. And in fact, was making me so sick, I thought I was gonna die. And I was leaving it all behind, a house, a marriage, a really good job. I had a really good job. I had one of the best jobs in journalism, working at GQ Magazine, writing articles about men. And I just couldn't do it anymore. And there was something that was arising within me that was demanding expression. And that thing eventually became this thing. <laughs> This is one of the first, this is the first edition copy of Eat, Pray, Love. Like, it doesn't even say, like, best-selling author, because I wasn't when this book came out. Like, who could have imagined what this book would be become, would become in my life and so many people's lives? One of my favorite anecdotes about it was that I was just uh, last year coming home from a trip to Costa Rica, and I was coming through customs, and the customs officer asked me what I was doing in Costa Rica and Colombia and Panama for two months. And I said, I was traveling around and that's probably seems suspicious. So she said, what's your profession? And I said, I'm a writer. And she said, what did you write? What do you write? And I said, well, I wrote this book called Eat, Pray, Love. And she said, you wrote Eat, Pray, Love? And then she called all the other customs officers. She's like, this is the Eat, Pray, Love person. And they all started laughing because she said every single day, this is at JFK airport. She said every single day, women come through here, coming from traveling abroad, and I ask them what the purpose of their visit was, and they say, I was having my own Eat, Pray, Love journey every single day. Come on. I mean, that's amazing 20 years later. So happy birthday, the beginning of Eat, Pray, Love. Thank you for everything you brought into my life, everything that you brought into so many people's lives. I can't believe how much it's still part of our vernacular. Um, I'm so glad I did it. I'm so glad I, I'm so glad I left everything behind and went and did that. And I've had to do it again multiple times in my life because my life story didn't end on the last page of You Pray Love um, or on the last frame of the movie where I was literally looking like Julia Roberts sailing into the sunset with Javier Bardem. Life is still in session. Earth school is still happening and huge transformations and changes continue to come to me over the years and I have to show up for this journey again and again. And this brings me to something that I want to share with you all and, and an invitation that I want to make in honor of this anniversary. So I've changed a lot since I was 34, 20 years ago going on that trip, but there are some levels at which I haven't changed at all. There are levels of pain and fear and anxiety and desperation that I still experience and ways that I need to show up as love for myself in order to get through those difficult times. That doesn't seem to stop. It doesn't seem to stop that I need that. And some of you may remember, <laughs> if you pick up your first edition of Eat, Pray, Love and turn to page 53, you may remember this scene where I was in Rome and I was having an emotional breakdown and I was full of depression and shame and anxiety and I medicated myself through it by writing myself a letter from love. Do you guys remember this? Um, and I m mentioned that this was a practice that I'd been doing and it's true. I've, I've actually been doing this practice for... 
25 years now. Um, and it's something that I do nearly every day of my life now. But in the book, I talk about how I was panicking and spiraling and and I needed love and I needed care and I didn't know anybody in Italy and I was alone and it was the middle of the night and I was frightened. And so I opened a notebook and I wrote these words, I need your help. And then a little while later, a response comes in my own handwriting. I'm right here, what can I do for you? And then this is the letter that love wrote to me. I'm here, I love you. I don't care if you need to stay up crying all night long, I will stay with you. If you need the medication again, go ahead and take it. I will love you through that as well. If you don't need the medication, I will love you too. There's nothing you can ever do to lose my love. I will protect you until you die. And after your death, I will still protect you. I am stronger than depression and I am braver than loneliness and nothing will ever exhaust me. And I wrote that that strange interior gesture of friendship brought me solace when nothing else could. This is a spiritual practice that I've never given up and I've taught it a lot over the years. Some of you who've taken my creativity workshops will remember that the final assignment I always give you in the creativity workshop is to write yourself a letter from love. I've heard thousands of letters from love from all of you over the years. And that brings me to this new adventure that I'm going on that I wanna invite you into. I'm starting a Substack newsletter, which I also hope will turn into a new community where I can meet with all of you and you can meet with me kind of in the way I used to do on social media back before social media grew venomous fangs. <laughs> and we all found out that it's maybe this thing that seemed really fun actually is like addictive and is engineered to be addictive and is really bad for the self-esteem of girls and women and also might be destroying democracy. <laughs> um, anyway, Remember how I used to be on social media? A lot of you have said you missed me on social media. I've been trying to recalibrate my relationship and understanding with it and trying to figure out where I can recreate those sort of early days community that, that we used to have um, in a safer space. And Substack is um, this newsletter service that a lot of writers are using right now in order to do exactly that, in order to create private communities. Patty Smith has a Substack newsletter. George Saunders has one, um, Samantha Irby, my friend Saleka Juad, like so many beautiful people are doing wonderful things. So it's an email, it's a subscriber email newsletter. And the way that it would work is that you sign up for it. Um, and I will send you every week a dispatch. And, but it's gonna be a very particular dispatch because there's a project that I wanna do um, with all of us on that Substack newsletter. Um, and I'm just going to read to you the mission statement that I wrote about it because I think it would be easier to read it than to try to explain it. Okay, so when I said settle in, I really meant it. <laughs> settle in! Um, so my, my Substack newsletter is going to be called Letters from Love. And the slogan of it is Opening the Imagination, Healing the Heart. And here's what it says. Letters from Love is both a learning space and a spiritual practice. Here, people come together to discover their inherent value and exquisite preciousness, and to learn how to write and speak to themselves from a place of love. Self-loathing is a rampant virus in our contemporary culture, so prevalent as to have become the default setting in most of our minds. Seldom do we even stop to question whether it is normal or healthy to live within a consciousness that is constantly attacking, judging, and insulting itself. But to condemn yourself as unlovable is to swallow a terrible lie and to believe that you must earn love through perfectionism or that you must seek love from other people in order to become whole turns all of us into hungry beggars. I believe there is an ocean of warm, affectionate and outrageously unconditional love available to us all and that it is conveniently accessible from within. I don't believe anyone is excluded from this ocean of love. It is only a question of learning how to hear it, how to feel it, how to trust it. For over a quarter of a century now, I have written daily letters to myself from love, and it has become the most transformative spiritual practice of my life. I have come to believe that there is a magnificent intelligence in the universe that is kind beyond measure, and that only seeks to know us and be known by us. 
Einstein wrote, the most important decision we can make is whether we believe we live in a friendly or a hostile universe. How you decide to answer that question will impact every moment of your existence. Hint, Einstein believed he lived in a friendly universe. So do I. In this space, I will teach you how to write yourself letters from unconditional love, how to open your imagination to that universal friendliness, and how to download its messages. I will share with you the letters that I have written, and I will invite you to share what you have written. Sometimes I will ask my friends and interesting strangers I meet in my travels to be special guests on the newsletter to write and share love letters to themselves. You don't need to be a writer or a creative. I hate that word. It's so exclusionary. You don't need to be a writer or a creative in order to join this practice. This is heart work and it's for everyone. I've taught this practice to people all over the world from middle school children to Fortune 500 executives and everyone can do it even the executives. This is not fancy writing. This is just a simple and beautiful download directly from a loving cosmos to your heart. And if you ever have trouble writing your own love letters, you can always use mine because love is for everyone and everyone deserves to be loved. So that is what Letters from Love is going to be. Um, and the way the newsletter works is you subscribe to it. And I've got two levels of subscription because I want to keep it as simple and accessible as it can be. So the first level is free. Um, you can just sign up for it for free. So if you don't have any money, you can totally do this. And every week I will send you the newsletter and the newsletter will include a video of me talking to you and reading you a letter from love that I wrote and encouraging you and instructing you on how to do that for yourself. So everyone can have that. Um, and then if you want to join as a paid subscriber, it's $5 and what you get with the $5, $5 a month or $50 a year. And what you get with the paid subscription is that you can engage. Um, you can write comments. You can write back to other people. You can share your own letters from love. I will be able to read your letters from love. I will be able to comment on it. And I'll also have um, a whole bunch of other stuff behind that $5 fee uh, paywall of like um, people who I think are interesting. I'm going to ask them to write letters from love, videos of me doing karaoke. I want to share my poetry with you recommendations, encouragement, things that I used to do on social media um, back in the day. And then also like my art, like this morning, because uh, this is the journal. These are the journals I use that I write to myself in. And um, this morning's piece of art, the little lotus flower that says, my overdeveloped sense of responsibility keeps nobody safe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what we're going to do. And I'm hoping that it will become like, a community of love and a community of care and a community where we all learn that all the love that we're seeking outside of ourselves is available, is available within ourselves. So, um, I hope you'll join. It feels like a really beautiful way for me to honor the 20th anniversary of getting on that plane and doing this thing that was itself an act of love, right? Choosing my own life over, the life that had been prescribed for me, a life that looked really good on paper. I call it a Christmas card life. I had a Christmas card life. <laughs> the husband I had, the house, I had a good job. And I was dying in there. I was dying of lovelessness. And I don't die from lovelessness anymore. I won't because I've found a way to tap into it wherever I am and whatever I'm going through, whether it's loss or grief or a pandemic or disappointment or creative projects that I thought I was going to be doing that turns out I'm not doing, <laughs> you know, like whatever it is, love is there for me and for you. So, um, if you would like to join us in this, um, you can subscribe the links, depending on where you're watching, this will be either in my bio, my LinkedIn or my link tree. So it's called link tree bio. Um, or it'll be in this caption or you can go to Substack and look for me. And, um, yeah, let's do this journey together. This is the next level, man. I remember reading that um, the meditation teacher and writer, Sharon Salzberg, met the Dalai Lama when he first came to the United States and nobody knew who he was, like met him in some living room in California. And one of the Americans in the room asked him what the remedy was for self-hatred. And the Dalai Lama needed to talk to his interpreter for like a half an hour before he even understood the question because he was so perplexed by what that could mean. He kept asking like, wait, who is the person that you hate? Who is the enemy? Who is the person that you hate? 
and then and they were like us we hate ourselves and everyone in the room all the north americans in the room were like we we hate ourselves you know we struggle with that and he was like it doesn't even make sense <laughs> like what is happening in this culture this is a real problem it is a real problem and we've all internalized it as completely natural and it isn't it isn't natural it isn't normal and it isn't healthy and this is the next journey that I want to go on, which is to teach everybody who wants to be included in how to talk to yourself and write to yourself from the love that you are, the love that you are. I can't wait to read your letters. I can't read, wait to share with mine. And um, let's see how this works. I'm excited and I love you all more than I can say. And happy birthday, eat, pray, love. Happy birthday. I love you guys. Bye.